Yeah, look at this. Watch this right here. To nothing. Hello, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. It's Friday. It's a cold front, kind of stormy-ish, rainy Friday. Uh, I am winding down my week. Uh, I have all my goals for this week accomplished, so I'm going to move on to doing something for myself day. Because if you don't take time for yourself and do the little things that make you happy, then, then what are we doing here? And what makes me happy right now is cool parts for my truck. And I got some more of them uh, from Banks. Check it out. This is a really awesome low to the ground cold air ram intake that's going to go to a really nice intake tube, which I think that is in the closet. Here, we'll put that back for now. To the closet we go. I've had this thing here for a couple days, but uh, priorities, you know, so I never got around to uh, being able to install it. Again, priorities. That's the adult thing, but check this out. We got another box right here. This one's autographed. And this is the rest of the uh, cold air intake package for my Dirty Max. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna put this air intake on my 6.6 6 Dura Max Silverado. This is gonna be fun. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a really good video. Ram air, check it out. Okie dokes, we're climbing up into the Silver Rado, starting the engine. For those of you who do not know, or if you're new here, this is a 2007 Chevrolet 3500 Silverado, 6.6 6 Duramax with an Allison 1000 six-speed automatic. And it has, I don't know, how do I use my thing? Warning, that's not the right button. Kilometers, oh no, I put it in metric. What have I done? That's what I get for running around slapping buttons. It has 221,706 miles on the odometer. Like I said, it's a cold day outside. Ambient air temperature, 66 degrees. Burr, 92% humidity, so it's cold and wet. Florida, Florida winter. But that's uh, better than Michigan winter. I heard from A-Rod today at uh, Power Stroke Tech Talk, and uh, he said it's two degrees up in Michigan today. Um, I, I feel bad for you guys. Two degrees, that's, uh, that's not good. Uh, I wouldn't make it very long up there. Anyway, let's swing this truck into the shop and uh, get that air intake installed. I don't believe that I'm going to need a lift, so we're just gonna nose this thing in. Right about here, I think. Good to go. Parking's the auto, windows, powering down. Now we haven't had one of these in a while. Popping in, a hood. Okay, hood up, what do we got here? Factory awesomeness. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna remove this intake horn, that baffle, this tube, this flex pipe, this air box, and we're gonna replace it with the high performance, high flow Banks units. So I have a confession to make. I, uh, I haven't opened my air filter box in probably like a year and a half, I think. Yeah, this filter's been in here for a very, very, very long time. It's a K and N, I think. But yeah, I've I've seriously neglected this uh, this filtration system. Let's see what we've got to, to work with here. <laughs> it's nasty. Come here, nasty filter. Oh, come out of there. It's gonna be a two-handed approach, I think. What are we what are we stuck on? I don't, I don't comprehend what's happening. Oh, all right. I'm just doing it wrong. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely filthy. Oh my. Well, there's your problem right there, lady. Dude, that's so bad. I'm ashamed of myself. No, seriously, I'm surprised this thing even ran. Watch this, look. There's like no light even coming through this. This is uh, definitely a full filter. This is probably why I was getting a uh, black smoke under load. Man, what a rookie move. I should have went to an old change place so they could have sold me a new one. So anyway, the filter's out. Let's go ahead and uh, get the rest of this stuff disassembled and removed. Mm, 
can't get that out, so I'll go ahead and pull the clamp for these uh, intake tubes and we'll pull those off next. There's one right there, and then one up high. Come here. Okay, that one's loose. Let's pull that guy off. Well, the bright side is, is it's still clean in here. That's good. Okay, so this is gonna have to come out next. It's just the air box. And that is secured with little pegs and rubber grommets down inside of this uh, in the fender well there. Okay, so I believe I need to remove this uh, this factory bracket for the factory air box. That's uh, bolted in with uh, looks like six 10 mil bolts. I'll pull these guys out. We'll set them aside. I probably need them to secure the new air box. See, that's three. Oh, my hat touched the flashlight and it almost came down. Looks like we avoided gravity today. Come out. All right, there's our bracket. Let's get that thing out of the way. So I'm thinking ahead a little bit and looking down we can see that uh, little plastic uh, panel right there. I'm certain I'm gonna have to remove that because that's the area where that uh, cold air intake scoop thing is gonna have to come through. So, it looks like it's bolted in from inside of the fender well. See that bolt there? And then the rest looks like it's just plastic clips. So, let's go into our fender. That's what we need. Let's get in there with our 10 wobbly and Pull that one out. On your lick. Oh, there was some pent up energy hanging out there. Let's see what happens. And it kind of disconnected. It actually just broke the clip thing off of the plastic thing. Whatever. Well, since the truck is choosing violence, I'll just match its energy. Oh, there we go. Side cuts. And what I'll do is reach in there and just snip off this little plastic connector clip looking thing. This is sort of far away. Get on that. Unclick cut, please. There we go. And I guess the rest has to come out to the bottom somehow. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, that's a bigger panel than I thought it was. Look at that. There's another 10 mil right there. We missed that one. Wrong way. Ring. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> Hmm, dragonfly. Okay, don't need that. All right, so that's our space for uh, that intake to go into. Okay, let's test fit uh, this component right here first. We'll go in through the bottom. Let's see how she fits. Do I have to remove my fender? Oh, you know, it gets skinny here. And we'll figure it out. Let's just force it in there. And up. More up. Oh, come on. Hey, 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 here we go. All right, we're a little closer. I think that hangs out like right over here or close to it. I get that more of it's exposed than probably what normally would be exposed, but you gotta understand that uh, I don't have the factory bumper on this, so we are gonna see a little bit of the scoop. No worries. But I do need to figure out how to secure this. Don't know how that bolts on. All right, 
right, so that scoop seems to test fit pretty well. So let's proceed. We're back up top at the air box. I'm getting rid of these, uh, this little plastic, uh, it's just a plastic panel. I'm pulling this thing off because I think it invades or encroaches on the space that the replacement air box is going to need. So we're just gonna pull these little clips out and we can remove and discard this panel right here. There we go. Okay, panel's gone. So let's drop in the replacement air box. Oh, very nice. Okay, so that thing fits in and the holes in it line up exactly with the holes uh, for the existing bracket that, or the factory bracket rather. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and thread some of these bolts in just to locate this part. Keep it from flippy flopping around because this is where it's going to live. Looks like we're only using four of those six bolts, which is cool. That means I have two extras. Yay. And then that scoop will come up through this opening here. So let's uh, try to fit that real quick. Yeah. See how it fits. You can't really see. Help me out, guys. I can't line it up from down there. I try to do it from up here. Or I'll look from up here and I'll hold it from down there. Or guide it in, or both. Oh man. Oh, we're so close to Gravity. Hmm. You know what? Love my job so much, I'll do it twice. I'm doing this wrong. I mean, I'm not, but I can't, I can't get those pieces to line up as they sit, so I'm pulling this guy back out. What I'll do is I'll bring the scoop up and then I'll put this thing down over the scoop because it's easier to maneuver and manipulate this piece than it is that piece down there. So what I'll do, pull that back out, pull this thing way up, like all the way up, and let me throw some blocks of wood under it to secure it and then we'll lower the air box down over this okay so i've got some uh six by six blocks of wood down there so this thing can't fall down now we're gonna try to get oh there we go that's that's what i was looking for okay this slides over i thought this thing went inside of this i was doing it wrong operator error all right now i'll put these bolts back in It's not that I couldn't do it, I just had the uh, order of operations incorrect. That was a problem. Click. Hope I don't have to take this out again. Very well engineered replacement component. I, I like I like how this is built. This is nice. Okay, so custom parts, um, custom problem, kind of. The issue is my factory bumper, or my lack of factory bumper. This thing does kind of stick out a little far for my application. So I'm thinking, I'll just make it shorter. Yeah, I bet if I trim off, I don't know what it would look like, half an inch. No, no, that's like two inches. If I trim off like two, two and a half inches, I can get this thing to sit flush against the frame there and I'll tuck it up very nicely. Ugh. Yeah, it does need to go up ever so slightly. I'll fit that thing in a little while now that I've got everything aligned and I know how it goes together. So I think next, let's go ahead and proceed and get some of these other parts installed on the intake. One of which is gonna be the intake boot, which is gonna go on the lid. So this thing is going to connect here, like so. 
which means the mass airflow sensor is going to be rerouted over to here. And, oh man, this wire loom I have is this garbage. Look at that. It's just disintegrating. Mm, yeah, look at that. It's terrible. It's not wire loom, that's, that's something else. We're gonna fix that too, right now. Yeah, truth be told, this has been bugging me for a long time, and I've never really taken the opportunity to do anything about it. But since we're here doing performance modifications, I figured it'd probably be a good idea to follow up on the repairs that have been neglected. And this is definitely gonna be one of them. Yeah, look at this, watch this right here. To nothing okay well i've got some replacement loom so i'll go ahead and run that stuff through this and uh or run this wire through the new loom and make this nice and shiny again looks like we're going back all the way to the alternator i'll unclick that and uh probably all the way up to the compressor yep. yeah this is kind of funny to me we uh we start off doing like a performance job and then I end up repairing factory wire loom. That's great. Way to, way to stick with the program, you know? Consistency and whatnot. Get out of here. See, the, the goal here is to cut this off without cutting the wires. There. So, what I'll do, I'll take the new loom and the old wire and we'll run it through. right right there at the beginning of the wire behind the connector and we'll just pull the wire into the loom run it all the way down and we'll cut it and tape it and then do the next section right about it's almost as far as it's going to go this thing is zip tied that's a factory connector, but I don't think I can get the loom through that, so I've got to cut it. I could still maybe try to reuse it, but now it needs to be cut. We can save that. I'm going to run this down as far as possible. Right there. Now we can see that there's a split here in the factory loom where we've got another circuit that branches off. So what I'll do is we'll leave this circuit hanging out and just keep running the loom down that harness until it runs out of space. Oh, didn't want to do that. Get back in there. Get back in there right now. Now over here on the connector side, we don't need any more loom here, so let's go ahead and cut it off. And then we can put a little bit of tape here to secure it for eternity. And it, this end is complete. This isn't uh, that rubbery electric tape either. This is like a woven, I forget what it's called. Hmm. It's like a woven, uh, well, it's wire loom tape. Very similar to what they use from the factory. There. It doesn't get all gooey and sticky and mushy like traditional electrical tape does. Now, we've got the branch right here. This is a, what, like a 12 inch section. So we'll go ahead and replace the loom on this one and that'll finish up the end of this harness then we just have to trace it back down to the next good part and uh and reloom that section i know we're off on a tangent sorry guys i just couldn't walk away it's been too long so again we take our piece and slide it over through the little crack, the gap, or the split, the seam, whatever you want to call it. Pull it through. Now we've got our union. This is where we can start to tape things off. Cut 
that one off right there. And again, a little bit of tape. Okay, so starting at the splice where the mass airflow connector wire meets the rest of the harness, I'm running a larger loom down that larger bunch of wires. And it's gonna run all the way down until it meets the good part of the loom down there, which is left over from the, uh, the primary wiring harness. So we're almost at the end of this little, little side quest right here. Run that down, and then we can join it with the other loom and tape it off. That way it looks like a, well, it'll look like factory. Like brand new looking factory. There we go. Now here's where it gets good. So we've got this larger piece of loom right here and on a smaller harness. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cut this off here and we'll transition this into another smaller piece. Uh, I didn't mention that I've got two sizes here. There's like a 3 8 and I think the other one's like quarter inch. See the difference? So one can fit inside of the other one with some uh, some finesse in that. And that's how we're gonna match up the last section of this uh, mass airflow. Run that down, starting from the connector, one more time. All the way down, and it's gonna go inside of that larger loom that I just ran and overlap a little bit. Nice, clean look. A little bit more. Again, we'll cut it off right here at the connector. Uh, again, taking care to not cut wires, because that would be bad. Like so, like so. Again, we'll tape it all off. Okay, so at this first exit right here where the uh, that smaller pigtail comes out, I've cut this loom at a very acute angle. And that's gonna meet the other loom at the angle that's kind of appropriate for the situation. And I'll go ahead and start to tape this joint connection up right here and create a, uh, a factory looking split. A yeah. little bit to hold it first and we'll bring it in some and then we'll go between them and that's going to bring those two pieces together in a nice looking y configuration and uh, create a very good looking connection and we'll finish it off down the line a little bit on the larger section of wire loom That, in my opinion, is a work of art. That looks good, I like that. That's nice. We did the same thing here at this other splice. I think there's like two or three Y splices in this section that I'm redoing. Same thing here on that one. Again, real good factory connection, and this right here is the section where the smaller loom went into the larger loom. And I'll just put some tape there to complete that transition as well. That way you can't really see where the gap is. Ooh, phone's ringing. I wonder if it's a scammer. I bet it is. Schnip. Let me go get the phone. Be right back. All right, this side quest is nearly complete. Let's go ahead and plug some of this stuff back in and we can reroute and re-secure uh, this harness right here gonna go just like that and then that's mass airflow that stays up top this one goes back to the AC system this is for the uh, low side pressure switch back here on the accumulator so we'll put that guy back in its plug but not before routing this under here there's a connector like a little wire harness bracket down there on the fender well Need to reuse that. 
So as long as this is routed properly, we're, we're in good shape. Yep, we'll set that inside of there. This one clips in, we'll do this one like right here. And then this one plugged into, I think the coolant overflow bottle. I think that's where that went. Yeah. Yep, down yonder. You guys can't see, it's dark in there. Let me get this thing plugged in, then we'll go back to our, our planned program here. Uh, that's a far away connector too. You see that? Come on, connector. Oh man, I'm on my tippy toes trying to trying to see this thing. There it is. Click. And I'll worry about setting these clips later on. I want to get everything kind of in position first and then we'll readjust it and maybe zip tie a few things. That way it's nice and clean and doesn't look like I've uh, manipulated it. Okay, let's do what we came here to do. Let's get this thing installed. Let's see, we'll point the banks thing this way so it looks nice and shiny. Then this guy gets plugged in right here and then two clamps go over it, which I have in the hardware kit. I think these are the ones. Slide that one on, yep. And that one. Over the factory intake horn. And I won't tighten any of this up yet. We're just gonna kind of get it all mocked up first. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit. Right here. And we'll take the lid for this box. Is this thing clean inside? Yep. No, maybe. I don't wanna have any kind of dirt or particles in here because this is all the clean side and I do not want my turbine sucking up particulate matter at 100,000 RPM. That would be bad. Compressors don't exactly like that kind of behavior. So our filter, big filter too, I think this gets bolted on or clamped on to the, uh, the lid here. Yeah, we can punch the clamp and we'll get this thing secured. Very large clamp coming in. It's gonna go around, around the filter base. And then we'll put the filter on the lid, squeeze that thing on, and then we'll clamp that down. It's a twice squeeze, good fitment. Now we can run the clamp down and that's gonna secure the filter to this uh, air box lid. Nothing crazy. We just need to provide a little bit of clamping force. And it's a little off center. Let me just screwdriver that up some. That's good. Good over here, good over here. Send it. Send it the other way. Beautiful. Now, since I've already displayed that I'm terrible at air filter maintenance, I, uh, I've also got a, uh, a dry filter sock here, and this is going to help mitigate my laziness. It's like a pre-filter for the actual filter. There we go, see that? Now, this guy will go down into that air box and it bolts on, but I'm not gonna bolt it down just yet because we need to fit this other uh, other boot. So what we have here is one more rubber flexi boot, two more clamps. Looks like I'm pulling that boot back off. That one goes there. And one clamp. I did it wrong. No, that's fine, you know what, that one goes there. And then this one up and over and around. Now, that guy goes in. This guy right here plugs in there. And we get everything aligned and looking good, then we'll tighten down all the clamps. So let's start with this one here. I wanna make this, uh, this boot as square and even as I can for aesthetic purposes, of course. Because if it doesn't look good, wasting your time. It's gotta look good. 
why else do we buy this kind of stuff? So it looks good, and so it sounds good. And more importantly, so it makes more power. But you know the rules, the better it looks, the more power it makes. Especially stickers. We'll do it like that. We'll hide the clamps on the back side again so it looks good. So far, so good. Nice and well, almost even. Not too bad. Let's make a couple adjustments on that one. I don't like that. The clamps were not even. Now they are. Click. Okay, give it the wiggle test. It's good to go. Now, if we look straight down, we will see that there's like a big hole in the side of this uh, this air box. And that is to accommodate the factory air filter sensor. It's basically a spring-loaded little uh, vacuum gauge. Uh, the idea being if um, the filter is restricted, it's gonna pull too much vacuum on the filter and it'll pop the little plunger thing in here and then set that gauge to zero and so you have a visual indicator on how your uh, air filter is performing. However, I'm not entirely certain that these things function because this was not tripped and yet this filter was plugged up to nothing. So I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe it wasn't clogged enough to trip that thing. Uh, regardless, we need to recover this little rubber grommet. Don't fall, where'd it go? There it is, we need this. This has to go in the replacement intake thing, intake tube. Then we can plug this guy back into it. Retaining our factory air filter alert system. There we go. Nice, now the most important part is gonna be our mass airflow sensor. So we need to head on over to the tool section and get this thing unbolted. It looks like it's a, a Torx bit. Show. Is that Torx 15, Torx 20? Something like that. I'll screw this guy and then just transfer this over to, uh, to the other pipe. Ooh, come here. Butterfingers today. Come here. <sighs> hmm, nice and clean. I wonder if I have mass airflow cleaner. Give it a squirt. Shiny. Okay, back at the truck. There's our freshly cleaned uh, mass airflow. And in the screws. So we'll screw this guy in. Yeah, thread. Hang on, hang on. I may be making a mistake. Wait. Yeah, easy oversight. See those brass inserts? Those brass inserts are threaded on the inside because they have some screws that go with them. The, uh, the factory style just had plastic threads and it was a completely different type of fastener. So I almost messed up and put the wrong fasteners in the wrong hole. That'd have been bad. Anyway, mass airflow is now installed. Tick. Okay. Go ahead and plug that guy back in. Right there. Okay, other than my little scoop, I've just got to get the four bolts for this guy in. But before we start finishing, let's secure the rest of these wires here just to make it all nice and pretty. Got the one clip here, the one a little bit farther down. You guys probably can't see anymore. I'll clip that guy on right there. Snap. And then the one for the uh, AC wire way down there we'll clip that one in next click okay harness is now secure that's nice looks good nice and factory looking it could use some zip ties later but i'll do that in another day all right now for the custom part i'm gonna go ahead and pull this lid back off of here now that it's all mocked up and everything's kind of put back together 
up on the top side. We're gonna pull the filter back out. Come here. And we'll set this guy aside for right now. Because what I need to do is shorten that little uh, scoop down there and make it come up to the top a little bit better and fit more snugly against my frame here for a cleaner look. So I'm gonna get the wood out by wood. Pull this guy back out after we take a measurement of what, uh, what kind of clearance we need and then we'll see what, what, uh, what I can do about cutting that to making it fit better. Uh, side note, for 99% of the applications, I think that thing fits the factory bumper just fine, but again, I don't have a factory bumper. My bumper is up like six or seven more inches and the factory unit is gonna sit like way down here. So that thing would fit just fine on a regular vehicle. But since mine is irregularly irregular, uh, I have to modify that. I'm sorry, Gail. Please forgive me for chopping up your beautiful piece of engineering. It's nothing personal. It's just custom. Okay, so what I'll do, we're down below again. I'm gonna hold this up at the top of this intake. It's uh, running into the bottom of that air box and I need to shorten this piece. So I will just take a measurement. If I can, I can manage this. I'll hold it up with my foot there. So what I'm looking for is about, looks like two inches on the dot. So I'll cut two inches off and we'll try to fit the thing again and uh, see how it works out. Let's pull this guy back out. Coming down. Okay, so like I said, we need two inches out of this thing, right? So two inches is gonna put the cut right here and that's gonna be right at the top of this transition where it curves. So I can actually afford the two inch cut and it's still gonna fit just like I should. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with my finger. Right there, that's two inches. I can eyeball the straightness, I think. Guys, I'm so sorry for chopping up your engineering. It's terrible. Gail, if you see this, forgive me. I have the best intentions. Okay, let's get rid of off uh, or get off all of our little little plastic burrs and shavings and all that good stuff. The blue towel will handle that. There we go. Okay, so I've got that thing back into its position and we can see it's a lot closer than before. I have the piece of wood shoved under there. Um, it is now bottomed out. Uh, I could well, it would fit better down there if I cut off like another half an inch or so, but I don't think it'll fit very well uh, down here in the air box if I cut off any more, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. However, I am going to continue with the custom mod stuff, and I'm going to run some screws through this on the inside of this air box. That way it holds the top of this to the air box. Uh, that's a custom feature that I'm installing and designing. Um, I think it's going to work best for my particular setup. So uh, let's go ahead and do that next. I'm just gonna use some self-tapping screws. It'll be okay. This should be pretty easy since it's just plastic. So what I'm gonna do is go in the little ratchet here and I'm just gonna start running those screws in. Now you guys can't see very much. Neither can I. Okay. One. I think I'll do two in the front and two on the back. That one's up high, so I'm gonna do this one down low. I'm not certain that that first one penetrated the, uh, the intake scoop or not. This is why I'm running two now. All right, that one went through for sure. You guys couldn't see, but because I'm in the way. That's one bolt. Good, 
Yeah, it looks like I totally missed with that first one. Let me show you. We'll pull the fender back. There they are. See the, there's the bottom one I just put in. There's the top one I completely missed with that top one. Had I not cut that off, it would have fit better. But since I cut it, it didn't. So I'll do, I'll do, I'll do three more in there. Okay. Next one coming in. Go down as far as I can. Right to the edge of the lip inside of the airbox. Yep, that went through both sides. Excellent. I'll do two more on the other two uh, other two sides here. Let's see. All the way at the bottom. Centered. That one went through. Beautiful. Click. All right. Extra fasteners. Very good. So now, when I pull lock out, this thing is already fairly secure. It has a mount, which uh, is going to be installed over here and bolts to the body, but I want to get it secured down here first. Don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but I'll uh, figure it out. Okay, we're in the fender well again. This is the back side of the uh, the scoop here and the scoop came with a bracket now this bracket I believe is supposed to bolt on and line up with these two holes right up here let me find that uh, let me find that groove hang on na, 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 na. Yeah, kind of like that but you see that's not gonna work because these slots are supposed to line up with these bolts which should actually be about two inches lower so what I need to do is figure out how to bolt this bracket to the scoop and then bolt it to the uh, body of the truck. And I think self-tapping screws would uh, will do the trick. Let's see. I know that this is gravity. I know that this thing is gonna get bolted on to the little uh, intake, so I'll just get those bolts in right now and get this thing secure. Let me find that bolt that I dropped. And this could be an interesting type of challenge here because my bumper is in the way so I can't really get a straight shot to run into that with a like a self tapper. But we're we're improvising as we uh, move along in the true spirit of engineering. I really hope this works because if I chopped up some Gale Banks parts with a sawzall for no reason. I'm gonna be upset. Everyone's gonna be upset. It's a terrible thing to do. Pick. So now, if I can just get a self tapping screw through this and through this, it should just uh, draw these two things together, and that, that'll be plenty of uh, reinforcement to keep this thing from wait, we were wobbling around. Okay, here comes the attempt to, uh, to make this work. Now, I can, won't be able to run a self-tapper through this and then expect it to also tap through that. You just can't go through two plates with a self-tapping screw. So what I'm going to attempt to do here is run this screw in just to that bracket using the wobble feature of this extension. It's gonna work or it's not. It's working. it it went through that worked it's not perfect but it's secure I'm good with that all right let's get this little fender well or inner fender back back into its home and oh, bolt that guy back in it's just got a few clips that kind of hang on to it sure I think I want this behind there that looks pretty good nice okay one up top Push you through and pick you in.
All right, let's take a step back and just see what this is looking like. Kind of mean looking, I like it. Like it fits in there. It's not too gaudy. The issue with the thing sticking out was kind of a problem, but I, uh, I don't really mind what, I, what I'm looking at right here, so that's cool. All right, back up top. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get that uh, air filter reinstalled, and then we'll start things the engine and see if it sounds any different. All right, we're back up top. I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the filter and the lid reinstalled. Then we can starting the engine. I wanna see if this sounds any different. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm uh, pretty certain though it's gonna perform a little bit differently. I think it has to. This is already an improvement over the factory design and my factory design filter was, was plugged up. Okay, we've got four Phillips headed stainless steel screws. These are gonna secure the lid to the upgraded air box. And at this point, that completes the install, I think. Let's get these guys tight. Again, nothing crazy, you just tighten things down until they, until they click. That's three and four. Nice. That looks good. What do you guys think? Is it gonna make 900 horsepower? I bet it could. All right, let's go hit the key. Let's see what this thing sounds like. Restarting the engine. Sounds good, it looks good. We got to fix up a few things uh, that needed some attention. So uh, I think that's gonna be about it for now. Uh, there will be more, uh, I've got some other bank stuff. You know what, I'll just, I'll show you right now. I'll show you guys right now. Since you're here and since you made it all the way to the end. So a few videos ago, I told you guys about these uh, eye dashes that I installed and how you've got custom programmable uh, gauges and uh, auxiliary sensors that you can install with uh, some of the add-on modules. That's the uh, four channel analog module and that allows me to connect uh, up to four independent sensors, whether they be fluid or uh, air temperatures, things like that, pressures. And I'm gonna use one of those channels to connect to this little fluid temperature sensor right here. And I've got some extension cords for it because it's gonna go far away from the gauge cluster. I wanna use this to measure some oil temperatures. However, it's not going to be engine oil temperatures. I wanna use that little sensor to monitor my rear differential temperatures. Because in a later episode, we're gonna do the bank's rear differential ram air axle cover and it's ram air because it's got these little scoops here that face forward and those are designed to collect air and run them up over the fins right here now this particular differential cover has a uh, a thread or a threaded hole in it designed to fit a fluid temp sensor so i'm going to install this temp sensor into this cover get this cover onto that truck and that will allow me to monitor in real time and very accurately whatever the temperature is of my rear differential, uh, which is useful to me because I tow a lot. And in towing applications, you kind of need to know what's going on. So that's gonna be an upgrade for a future video. Again, not today, uh, probably not this week, probably not next week, but eventually I'm gonna get around to doing that too. So let me know what you think about this air intake right here in conjunction with that rear differential cover in there and how all that's gonna integrate into my gauge cluster right here. Let me know what you guys think about this setup. Let me know what you think about this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, then, uh, well, let me know what you think about that in the comment section and uh, I'll use your feedback to try to do better. 
So, again, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of transmission, end of Banks product feature video, end of Silverado, end of day, end of week, end of transmission. Okay, so final thoughts and sort of a first impression uh, while driving with this uh, new intake. I, I really like it. I am uh, objectively going to confess that this is a subjective review because I'm the subject and this is kind of all my opinion. And I don't have any data or anything, uh, uh, horsepower or uh, quarter mile times or any, and I don't have any measured data to back it up but uh, it could be a placebo effect. But either way, uh, I really like the performance of this thing and I think the throttle response is a little bit better. I think the turbo response is a little bit better. And uh, I think drivability just overall uh, feels improved to me. I, I like it. And I have not seen any smoke yet. I, I think my some of my smoke problem was from that filter. I'm, like I said, I'm embarrassed that my filter was that bad. Fun idea though. Maybe I will weigh that filter and then wash it out and then weigh it again and we'll see just how much dirt was actually in that filter. Uh, like I said, I, I put that thing in back in the day when I worked at the dealership and I think that was uh, over two years ago, something like that. So it's, the filter's been in there for a while uh, and neglected at the same time. Now we're rolling about 60. Let's, let's do some full throttle real quick, hang on. That felt really nice. It sounded cool too. It sounded really cool. I, I like this thing. I like the Banks mods. I think they all work well together and I think they're engineered to operate in harmony. I say that because I also have the exhaust on this. It's the, the Banks five inch, four inch exhaust. And it, I think that goes well with this intake. So my Dirty Max can breathe a little bit better. And naturally that translates to more power, better throttle response, and maybe more fuel economy, which I know is kind of a joke with this truck because I get 14, 15 to the gallon, 11 or 12 if I tow, depending on what it is. So uh, that's my final thoughts on this intake. I like it and that's what matters to me. Um, I'll make mention of it again next time I have a trailer back there and uh, we'll see how I feel subjectively. We'll see how I feel uh, if there's an important performance improvement with a, a larger load in the back versus a running bobtail, so to speak. So again, thank you guys for watching. See you guys later. Re-ending of transmission.